We're going we're gonna, to, I think, be equally as strong there. I think it's going to look different than Rebecca Brunson, uh, but I think we're going to do the same things uh, X and O wise. Offensively, I, I have a, you know, sort of a, a plan that will probably change course a little bit once we get into practice and we see we're going to be able to get penetration to the rim more than what we have, I think, probably in the last five years combined. Um, so we're going to get to the foul line. Um, we have to, in doing that and collapsing a defense, we're going to get more three-point opportunities. We attempted just 15 threes a game last year. We can't live in that same space. We have to push closer to 20. Uh, and if it's above 20, we're in really good shape. Uh, so I think convincing our players that uh, we've got to do more of that to give Syl the space that she needs. Uh, Syl will still be the central point of what we're doing. Uh, but I'm sort of eager to uh, do some different things. You know, um, uh, I certainly would love to have uh, that same team in its prime for sure, but we don't. It's not where we are. Uh, and I, I'm really, really anxious to uh, see the projections uh, for the WNBA. Uh, it probably won't include us anywhere near the top, uh, but that's what we're eager about. I think this group is very prideful, uh, and they're going to work really hard to make sure there's not much drop-off. Thanks. Thanks for the question. We appreciate it. Let's welcome Planet Pearson joining us. We appreciate you coming up. Thank you. You've played a lot of places. Yeah. You've Just traveled a, few. a lot. Just any, a few. Any good stories for us? Um, I'm looking at Coconuta Madaloni. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Any, any in stories? Italy. In Italy, yeah. Um, the food was great. Well, it's funny because, you know, John Grisham is a famous author, and he's not one of my favorite authors, but one book he wrote was Playing for Pizza. And he wrote up this fictional story about this, like, kind of washed-up quarterback, went to Italy to play semi-pro football, and the, the whole book is about these eight-hour meals they would have. Yeah, they definitely eat one course at a time. You get your <laughs> salad, then you get the bread, and then you get the pasta, and then you get the beef, and then it's like, I'm done after the bread. Like, <laughs> where's the whole meal? <laughs> Uh, did you enjoy the Texas Tech basketball run? The I Final absolutely Four? loved it. I actually made it in town to sit at the bar and watch it. So that was great for my alma mater to make it to the um, championship game. Um, hadn't done it on the men's side. So that was great to see them and their rise. I like the qualification on the men's side. They haven't done yep. it. But on the women's, they were there. On the women's, we've done that. <laughs> I assume you were a Cheryl Swoops fan. I am a Cheryl Swoops fan. I will always be a Cheryl Swoops fan. Um, she paved the way for me at Texas Tech and then coming into the WNBA, so why wouldn't I be a fan? Yep. Cheryl, you have any questions for your... Yeah. Who would you like playing for better, Bill or Cheryl? <laughs> See, I knew she would ask better questions than me, so... <laughs> I know I was nicer, better looking. I smelled better in timeouts. No question about that. What's your perspective? Well, since you employ me currently. (laughs) (laughs) No, I actually, I learned a lot from both of them. Um, They're very similar. If you guys don't know that already, they're very similar. They could be brother and sister, you know. Um, But I think they just bring the best out of everybody. They have a personality, P. Do I have a little bit better personality? Than yeah, absolutely. Okay. He's, a, he's a little dry with yeah. his personality, but it's okay. Um, I think they see the best in you, even when you don't see it in yourself, and that's what motivates you to keep going and, and pushing and taking all the swear words and all the yelling that you know you can possibly hear in one day. And she's going to do it as a coach, I guarantee you. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that up to you, and I'm going to go and pacify them. Like, it's okay. She loves you. She just sees something that you don't see. <laughs> she's already done that. So Coach Plodette, uh got to town right around the, the draft. Uh, was very valuable in, uh, as far as input during the draft. And, uh, you know, she was thorough in her evaluations. It's really fun. It's really see, uh, fun to see Planette. You know, I knew her, you know, not necessarily way, way back, but certainly, uh, you know, far, way, way back, has been way, 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 way back. back. Um, and just to see the evolution of Planette Pearson, the person, uh, and now the professional as a coach, I'm, I'm just really excited. I don't think Planette uh, stopped smiling. That's what I love. Every time I see her now, she's got this smile on her face, just happy to be doing this and to be coaching and uh, in the WNBA. And we're really, really lucky to have her. And, you know, I can't wait for her to use her voice. Uh, you know, I think uh, her, her handle was uh, uh, Enforcer, D- Enforcer. And so I'm going to need her to, to share those tactics uh, with this post group that we have. I'm excited to have P. What are you most excited about, P, as you start your journey coaching? 
Um, I'm just excited about just growing the women's game. Um, we talk about it all the time, about how we need to grow this game. And, you know, this game has given me a lot, and I've taken a lot from it. So it's my turn to impart knowledge on the youth and just build the confidence and so we can continue to build this league because it's a great league. It gives you a lot of avenues to do a lot of different things, um, and it's important that we take care of it. What was it? Go right ahead. Thank you. So what was the best place you played overseas and the worst place you played overseas? Hmm, that's a tough one. Um, my best place would probably have to be in Italy because I loved traveling. Um, on my free time, I would go to different cities in Italy. Of course, the food is amazing. Um, I also liked Israel. I had a, a great time in Israel. I spent five years in Israel, so I learned a little bit of Hebrew, but don't ask me to speak it now because I won't be able to. Um, the worst place would have to be Russia, um, only because their culture is to not smile and, you know, they're, they're very down a lot and they're very hard on their athletes. So um, that just kind of took me aback a little bit um, because I think we have a, a reason to smile every day we wake up um, because it could very well be very different. You know, a lot of times we record the show at Cheryl's office and the Lynx offices, and obviously some people, Walt or somebody, they also drop by, and everybody seems to be very upbeat. And I've mentioned that to Cheryl. I said, Cheryl, you know, it seems like a really good place to work, a really good, you know, atmosphere. She says, well, you really haven't seen me after a loss. <laughs> so how different... She sees me in the off-season. It's how different. How <laughs> different is it after a loss? Oh, it's very somber. <laughs> Everybody's walking on eggshells. Nobody wants to say, okay, good night, coach. Like, <laughs> we just want to, like, not be seen. So we have a tendency to want to win so that she'll be smiling and laughing like she is now. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> and to date, what has it been like to offer advice to Cheryl? Hmm. Um, it's been good. Um, just to have her listening. I know I, I'm, I'm new to this. Like just having her listening to my input is just, it means the world. It means that I'm not overlooked in no way, shape, fashion, or form. And I think um, that's something that a lot of women have a problem with. They are not willing to listen to another woman. Um, and that's all part of growing women in whatever field it is, is just listening and giving an opportunity. Do you have any more for, for Planet? Instructions? Um, orders? I appreciate Planet. First of all, I appreciate Planet being here. This was optional. Yes. Uh, come support. But mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Planet, what are you doing tonight? The fans would love to see you. <laughs> Planet's very smart like that. Very, very smart. I'm, like I said, I'm just excited. Um, in 2017, when Planet finally played for the Lynx. We tried for how many years? It's a little bit like Karima. We tried, um, really since I left uh, Detroit and, and came to Minnesota, we tried repeatedly to, to have Planet a part of the Lynx. I knew what she would bring. Uh, so it was finally our time together in 2017. Uh, it's one of the most joyful things uh, when the season ended uh, to see Planet get what she wanted, which was another ring. Uh, I, in recruiting Planet, I sent her a, a picture of her in a Lynx uniform with a trophy, and I said, one more. And, and Planet was like, yeah, we're going to do this. And uh, so, it, you know, in observing Planet in her final season, you know, it was clear that from a, a physical standpoint, she knew that she was probably close to being done. Uh, and if we got that one more, she'd walk away. Uh, but what I saw from Planet in that time, she was a, you know, sort of a player coach for us. The way that she communicated to her teammates and the things that she gave us intangibly were so valuable. Uh, and I say probably the most important job that Planet has is to keep Simone laughing. If Simone's laughing, then Simone's playing well. When Simone is too serious, it feels like a job. She's not very good. So that's Planet's number one job is to keep Simone laughing. That's easy. She hasn't stopped laughing since I got here. So that's pretty easy. I think I just walk in the gym and she starts laughing. So. And of course, those who are here for our last live show at the Poor House remember Cheryl telling the story. You know what, what's coming, Planet? I don't want to hear it. Uh, <laughs> Cheryl was having one of her big, you know, inspirational locker room talks, and all of her players are staring her in the eye, and then Simone farted, and it was over. <laughs> See, the entire does. moment was over. <laughs> that doesn't sound like her, does it? Oh, no, that sounds totally different than Simone. <laughs> uh, you know, Simone is an icebreaker all the time. She knows how to cut the tension in the room, but, you know, we have to calm her down sometimes when we only have a 30-second timeout, and she's yelling and screaming. <laughs> Planet, great stuff. We appreciate you being here. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you, Planet. Appreciate you.
we have a live question. Hi. I've never been a fan of men's sports, but I've been a fan of the WNBA since the first Lynx game I went to. So my question is, at a time when the WNBA is ready to have the money and sponsorships and um, fandom that men's professional sports have, what makes the WNBA special that you think should stay different? What do I think makes the WNBA special? I, I think probably, the, you mean as compared to men's sports or just in general? I, I think that, I think what we pride ourselves on, I think the players can speak to this, we like to sort of share our product, uh, you know, connecting with fans. I think that's probably far and away separates us from men's sports. And I think that the difference is there's money that impacts how people feel about themselves uh, on the men's side. They make so much money, um, you know, they have, you know, bodyguards and they have, you know, things that keep them from their fans. And I hope that's something that never changes about the WNBA. I think, um, you know, we work really hard. Uh, we have to. We have to connect with our fans to, you know, we're constantly, you know, having that push to move the game forward. Without that connection, uh, we'd be lost. Uh, and I think it's, you know, again, you know, Jim, you mentioned it, that when you come to the game, um, you know, most, most people, I, I haven't encountered a person that didn't say they didn't, didn't enjoy the heck out of it for the way that we did it. Uh, the, the way that we treat each other, um, you know, the sort of the, the chemistry, the camaraderie, uh, the sharing uh, of, of the game of, of basketball. Uh, I think those are the things I hope we always have. Uh, I do fear with greater money, greater coverage, uh, you create you know, sort of those um, monsters, if you will. Uh, I hope women can resist that because uh, I think that's what makes us really special. Thanks. Yeah, I haven't seen any Russell Westbrooks in the uh, WNBA. Meaning? <laughs> well, just Russell's tough, man. He is. He Next is question. Tough. Next question. Uh, it's funny too because I, you know, I covered baseball for a long time, and I talked to a lot of old baseball writers about what it was like to cover baseball back in the day, and they said, you know, it was completely and. The reality here is most professional athletes are very pleasant to deal with. Uh, yeah, I'm making fun. I made, took a shot at Russell Westbrook because he's in the news right now. But generally, most professional athletes are very good to deal with in all sports. Uh, you do have a few who just, you know, they're so insulated from real life, maybe they don't really... They don't relate to people anymore. And I talked to old baseball writers and said, you know, in the, back in the day, you went to the bar and... You, if you had a beer, you were sitting next to two players. You know, they lived in middle class housing. They worked in the winter, so there was there were no airs yep. put on. And I guess that is a danger if you start making twenty five, thirty million dollars a year. I'll take a chance. <laughs> I take the chance too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the flip side of it is, I also have covered a lot of golf, and there was a time before Tiger, when golf's commissioners and their brain trust. They wanted to be able to pay their players more because they wanted it all to feel like a bigger deal, yep. like there were more chips on the table. They didn't want to get away with giving away a small pot. They wanted to, have to give away so much money that people would realize what a big deal it was. Yep. That's what's necessary. It's how you treat it, right? Yep. I think you know, I spoke to a group. It was largely men um, at this event. And just opening their eyes to the things that we do for men's sports that we don't do for women's sports. Uh, when a soccer team wants to come to town, we build them a shiny new stadium that you guys pay for. Uh, when the WNBA came to town, there was not, there was not hey, clear the way for us. Um, it's just the, the, you know, the mindset, the decision makers, the ones that are sitting there deciding where they're, the company is going to put their dollars. They're not, we're not thought of in the same way in terms of, you know, the NBA came from, in the 50s and 60s, uh, a level of disinterest in watching basketball that they had to have uh, what I call a gimmick. They had to have the Harlem Globetrotters play to get people to come, want, want, come watch them. The same thing was true for the NFL, right? They had to play before a high school game uh, for there to be interest. But you didn't see people run away from the NBA or the NFL. They put more money into it. Uh, where it's not the same for the WNBA, um, you know, the NBA, you know, at every chance they get, they say that the WNBA loses money as if in some way to discredit us. How are we supposed to grow if our, if our parent company is treating us in this way? I don't think that Apple disparages the iPad. Uh, and so I think that's really important. The NBA is an iconic brand. 
when you show people what's possible as leaders and you hold up the WNBA, it'll be contagious and people will follow. Uh, and I just think that mindset of investing uh, in this league the same way we invested in the NBA and the NFL in its early years, and we're going to see the same thing happen for us. We're only 20 years in. It took 40, 50 years for the NBA and NFL to get to where they are today. So we have to keep the mindset that we should treat the women the same way we do the men. And that's a hard mindset, but we have to push for that. 